Hi, I'm Mickey Kennedy, and I want to thank you for taking the time to learn more how press releases can help your business. Who this is for? This is for small business owners, startups, and authors who want more traffic and better customers through PR. If you sell a product, book, or service, whether it's unique or commodity, these strategies will work for you. In the next few minutes, you'll learn how to develop a PR strategy for your business, even if you don't have deep pockets or feel you're very important. How to attract media attention by crafting content the media wants to receive and share with its readers or viewers without using consultants, PR firms, or a high-priced publicist. How to leverage what makes you unique without deceit, hyperbole, or making your skin crawl, even if you feel like you're not that special. Hint, you are. How to drive traffic and customers to your website through the same methods used by high-priced PR firms without the expensive retainers or long-term contracts. How to reverse engineer what's working and what's not being discussed within your industry for media opportunities, even if you're not an industry expert. How to stand out when your product or service is indistinguishable from a lot of stuff sold online, even if the only thing that separates you cannot be seen, like amazing customer service. How to get local media coverage, even if you never write a single press release or spend a dollar with me, which I, I, I think you're going to want to once you learn a little bit more about press releases and e-releases. My promise to you, a step-by-step -step strategy for getting media coverage. So here's some house rules. These are uh, some basic tenets you need to understand and form the foundation of your PR strategy. There's no magic bullet. Behind most successful press releases are several that failed. A PR campaign is a series of at least six press releases. Each press release failure is an insight that a particular angle or hook didn't work at that time. You want to come up with a PR plan before you begin, a hypothesis of several press release ideas, then attack one by one until you succeed. Leverage each press release success by revisiting what worked and determining a possible response that isn't saying the exact same thing all over again. My clients' results are not typical. Typical press releases yield typical lackluster results. Build uncommon content that the media finds engaging and shareworthy. While there are no guarantees with PR, most successful startups and even fast-growing giants like Facebook, Apple, and Google wouldn't be where they are today if it weren't for the traffic and credibility that comes from earned media. But before we get to the good stuff, let me check in and see where you're at. Does this sound like you? Do you feel you're spending money on advertising and it's not working to consistently grow your business the way you want? Do you start each month wondering what more you can do to grow your business? Are you tired of chasing social media platforms, trying to make it all work? Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, Pinterest. Do you secretly know you're providing more value, better service, or something else that isn't being appreciated by current or prospective customers? Do you see other people within your industry getting the traffic, attention, and customers you want and you have no idea how they're doing it? Are you tired of working too hard in your business or working too many hours, zapping that energy and drive you once had? Do you feel like online marketing has become an enemy or threat to your business rather than an asset? Do you feel like you keep hitting a wall in your business? If any of that sounds like you, I have good news. None of those things are the real problem. Those are just the symptoms. The real problem, you haven't taken the eight steps. And we're going to talk about what those are in just a second. But just to know that what I'm doing here is giving you the tools, the resources, the basis for building a compelling PR campaign, one that will succeed and transform your business from obscurity to notoriety and in a good way. And you control it. Once you take these steps, you'll have complete control over how you generate traffic and what type of customers you want to attract.
You will obtain this traffic and ideal customers by issuing press releases that address an opportunity in the media, establishing yourself as an authority, and resulting in articles about your business. You will establish credibility and convert willing customers who are less likely to price shop and create customer service headaches. You'll realize that the wall you were hitting in your business was the limits of your current marketing, given your current landing page, mindset, and messaging. And you'll do all this while tapping back into the joy and drive you had when you first started this work. Before we go too much further, let me take a second to introduce myself so you know who I am and why the heck you should listen to me. I'm Mickey Kennedy. I'm founder and president of eReleases, a 22-year-old press release service that has issued more than 50,000 press releases for more than 10,000 small businesses, startups, and authors. I've generated media mentions and earned media valued in excess of $87 million for my clients. I specialize in helping my clients leverage newswire access by making the most of their PR opportunity. I'm also known for my mildly amusing Christmas family photos and for being a committed poet, having earned my Masters of Fine Arts many years ago in creative writing. Discovering the Eight Steps These are the eight steps you must make to get media attention for your business, giving you more traffic, improved SEO, and better customers. I'm going to walk you through all eight of them in this session. I've been doing this for more than 20 years. I've seen press releases succeed, and I've seen them fall flat. I want you to give PR a chance. I want you to succeed, to succeed with a solid PR campaign of at least six press releases. I do not want you to try one mediocre press release with no strategy and no PR plan, watch it fail, then assume press releases won't work. That's why I'm here, revealing the strategies and approaches that have worked for my most successful clients. A marketing expert told me that I needed to develop a course and sell these strategies for a lot of money. At the end of the day, I run a press release distribution business, not an online learning platform. I want to give you this education for free. I want you to learn that PR holds the most potential of any marketing channel you will ever use in your business. I want you to issue press releases, and if you happen to use my company, that's great. Actually, that's better than great. But even if you don't, you will always have this education. You will know more about PR strategy than most people who send press releases today. Step one, own your story. Sometimes I know a press release will be a home run, like the client who introduced a genetic, genetically modified cat back in 2006. That cat was honored in 2006 as one of Time Magazine's best inventions. Admittedly, the fact a cat is being heralded as an invention is a bit strange. This company was featured everywhere. People, Discover, The Economist, Newsweek, Washington Post, Wall Street Journal, USA Today, you name it. A lot of the news was bad. I recall being at Chicago Midway looking at a newsstand and I think as much as a third of the magazines that were there had this cat uh, on its cover and it was not good. You know, are we playing God? Should we be uh, creating animals in a lab? But despite this, I knew the media response was going to be favorable for the business. And it was. The company did millions of dollars in sales. 99% of businesses will never have a story like that company. But fortunately, much of the news world doesn't run on groundbreaking news. For every single article in Fast Company and Inc. Magazine, a well-funded startup that's very newsworthy, there's a, usually at least two or double the amount of articles on a company that subsisted on friends, family, and credit cards during the lean years. I had one client share that in the early years of their business, he and his wife prepared shipments on the kitchen table. That anecdote made it into a national magazine. The media wants real stories about real people. Their readers relate to the human condition of struggle and sacrifice, while also sharing in the accomplishments and milestones. Once you learn to harvest your stories, your anecdotes, and start to share your milestones and accomplishments with the media, you will discover changes within yourself, your business, and almost as if a side effect, you should get media pickup, by which journalists, bloggers, and trade publications write articles about you. I shared earlier that I'm a poet, and I'm going to get philosophical here but it's important. I have had several clients on their way to PR success say the early failures helped them to refine their messaging, writing down who they are as a company for the first time, and to come together to celebrate the wins. 
One woman told me a manager at her company read one of their press releases and immediately felt proud. It had captured who they are as a company and how they want to be presented to the world. That manager later revealed she had considered leaving the company because she didn't feel the company was focused or really cared. Celebrating your wins matters. It changes your DNA, your morale, and you begin to attract better employees, better customers, and a better way of doing things. For this reason, always put your press releases on a section of your website and share them on social media. Sometimes it makes sense to share them directly with customers, suppliers, etc., even if it's just a section in a company email newsletter. Share your stories and your journey. It might seem courageous, but in fact, it can often be contagious. In addition, journalists who want to learn more about a company love to find a company newsroom where they can review and research past announcements, giving them a clearer and more complete picture of a business. It also sends a credibility signal to visitors, letting them know you are a real company with real milestones in your past. Suppliers, vendors, and even banks like to see well-stocked newsrooms of businesses they work with. It's a huge credibility boost that on its own helps you convert more customers and opens you up to more partnerships and opportunities. What milestones are worth issuing a press release? Well, that's easy. Visit ereleases.com slash topics. You'll be taken to a web page with, with over 70 ideas for your next press release. This page includes obvious ideas like an acquisition, a new product or service, a new hire, but it also includes things like insights on a new trend, charitable work, a new study, a white paper, and more. The key is to pick what you feel is a solid milestone and make the press release as strong as it can be with a great quote by someone at your company and paying a special attention to your headline and your opening sentence. Be strategic, action-oriented, and concise. That being said, don't let this list be your go-to for building out your PR plan. Only do so when the press release milestones are truly worth celebrating. The reason so many press releases are written on these topics is that many businesses lack imagination. The additional steps I cover in this video session are much more strategic and offer a much greater chance of media pickup. Don't sell yourself short by not occasionally doing press releases from this list. Just be sure to present yourself as positively as possible when you do. Some of my clients have felt that a press release is bragging if it showcases their accomplishments, like it's placing too much emphasis on something they don't consider a cornerstone of their business. This is not boastful bragging. You have a duty to your business to lead from strength, including highlighting areas in your business that the media may want to share with their readers or viewers. Being authentic to your business demands that you own all of your experiences and showcase elements that you don't think are a big deal. To find areas you should consider spotlighting, do an inventory of your unique selling proposition, which includes areas where you, your business, product, or service is superior to competitors in the marketplace. Determine your USP and build a moat around it. Protect it. If your USP is speed of shipping, you must constantly audit your shipping and realize you're competing with companies like Amazon and Walmart who are on the path to offer same-day distribution to many of their clients. Amazon and Walmart may not be your competition, which is fine, but you must recognize that other companies, including actual competitors, may be considering a similar approach. And if not today, they may be doing it some point down the line. You can have more than one USP, balancing what areas you want to claim and what areas your customers actually want. You might also find your existing customers prefer USP1 and you've found the customers you really want to attract are responding to USP2. Complicating things, you might find the media to be more responsive to a secondary USP like USP3. So it's a matter of balancing your needs with the needs of the customers and the media, which is always looking for interesting and unique ideas for their readers or viewers. You can test your USP in a press release, and if that fails, consider a press release that focus on, focuses on a secondary USP. I did want to point out that superior customer service is one of the hardest USPs to promote or highlight because it's often hard to distinguish and there's become an expectation they should always receive good customer service. Being the founder of a company that focuses on superior customer service, I wish it promoting superior customer service worked more than it actually does. If you sell a commodity that is indistinguishable from that sold by others, you must do a deep dive to distinguish how you want to 
compete against others. What makes you different? Something has to make you different. Price, customer support, add-on, speed of delivery. If you don't have a USP, then you need to create one that you can profitably deliver. This is not just to get media attention. This is critical to the survival of your company. Very few companies can grow or prosper if they aren't doing at least one thing better than most. Without a strong USP and knowing where your company fits into the competitive landscape, eventually your company will fail to prosper whether you use PR or not. Several businesses sell MacBook Pro laptops, but Apple doesn't allow other companies to sell them for a discount more than a few negligible percentage points. How do companies compete even when Apple itself sells them? Well, Best Buy competes by providing in-store availability and occasional promotions like a gift card. Amazon competes on its streamlined shopping experience with quick, quick delivery. B&H Photo excludes sales tax from purchases in many states where they don't have a physical presence. And Mac Mall often creates free bundles that include software and accessories they throw into the deal. Each company is trying to offer something unique and distinct from its competitors. So the one that resonates with their desired customer stands out. Some of these companies will mix and match the approach until they find one that works and hope it continues to work. Step 2. Research your industry. I previously mentioned a local carpet company in New Jersey that became a media darling by sending out a press release on marketing against big box home improvement stores. Here's what I didn't share. One particular floor trade publication offered them a marketing column if they wanted to contribute regular articles of marketing. That magazine said they received more favorable feedback from that one article than all of the feedback they had received in the past year. This proved that a vacuum existed in the floor trade industry when it came to discussing the issue of marketing. Are there similar opportunities within your industry? Is there a subject or topic you can tap for a press release that has been an industry blind spot? Exploring who are the heroes, villains, and cheerleaders within your industry might reveal angles the media will respond to. In my carpet company example, big box home improvement stores are the villains. Who are the unsung heroes or champions in the industry? For example, an individual government official may be a friend to the industry, creating an opportunity for you to call for his or her recognition. Or it could be someone who was instrumental in forming an industry trade association and has been quietly existing in the background. As a member of the industry, you can advocate for someone else, thrusting you into the spotlight as a person of influence in your community. Another approach? Reveal the dirty secrets everyone in your industry knows. You only need one dirty secret for this to work. Ingrained industry knowledge is often not written down or explored in writing. Everyone in the industry just takes it for granted when in fact some people within the industry weren't aware of it at all. In online marketing, the issue of click fraud from link farms and bots is known by most people, yet I still see articles on the subject a couple of times every year, which can often be traced back to a press release by a company offering its click fraud solution. Despite most industry insiders being aware of it, readers are still interested in the topic, meaning journalists will cover it from time to time, if you just approach them with the right message and a compelling quote. Often that right message is taking the existing topic and expanding it, like addressing how mobile traffic fits into the issue of click fraud. Do your research, find out what's been covered, then try to improve upon it. If you add to the overall conversation, you stand a good chance of being rewarded with media coverage. Step 3. Quote me on it. The key to getting earned media on a topic outside of your direct business, like an industry opinion or call to honor someone, is to craft a memorable but concise quote. If a journalist can paraphrase your quote without giving you credit, you make it all too easy for that to happen, often by a managing editor who doesn't realize that behind a mediocre quote from someone at an unknown company is the person who inspired the story to begin with. Make it so that if your quote is removed, the article would suffer. Spend more time on the quote than any other element of your press release, with the possible exception of the headline. Example of a mediocre quote. ABC One Hospital is a leader in providing exceptional quality of care for residents of the region, said John Smith, President and CEO at ABC One Hospital. We see Product X as a welcome tool to be used in our cleaning methods. Infection prevention is important to us. It gives peace of mind to our patients and staff as they will know that our facility is safe. Example of a stronger version of that. 
The addition of Product X to ABC1's hospital's stringent cleaning methods provides a much-needed weapon in the ongoing fight against infection, said John Smith, President and CEO at ABC1 Hospital. As a regional leader in quality care, we continually strive to bring improvements to our infection prevention protocols to secure the peace of mind of our patients and staff. The difference here is subtle, but the second example reads better and has more strength. It also focuses more on the product. Very few words were removed, just the arrangement tweaked to be less passive. Another example. Here's the mediocre quote. Securing the Internet of Things is unlike any of the traditional enterprise devices we've had to secure up until now. For those past devices, security is added after the device is manufactured and shipped to the user. It's like the device is a baked cake and the security is layered on like icing, said Jane Smith, Vice President of Sales at XYZ Technology. IoT requires security to be designed and architected into the device. Essentially, security needs to be mixed into the batter from the beginning before the cake is baked. Using alternative DIY approaches to IoT security are simply too inconsistent and too risky. XYZ is leading the industry by providing organizations with a complete commercial grade and purpose built solution for designing and implementing secure IoT. As a poet, I love the metaphor of a baked cake. As a journalist, I would have hated it took a whole long paragraph to get the point across. This rewording below is much more concise and probably contains much of the same information. Unlike traditional enterprise devices, where security is added after the device is manufactured, the Internet of Things, IoT, requires that security be designed and architected into the device, said Jane Smith, Vice President of Sales at XYZ Technology. XYZ Technology provides organizations with a complete commercial grade and purpose-built solution for designing and implementing secure IoT. Be fast. Be faster than everyone else with your quote. When I worked in the telecom industry 25 years ago, there was a telecom analyst who was quoted in probably a third of all articles about a telecom-related merger, piece of legislation, or other hot-button issue. I met him at a trade show in Atlanta, Georgia, and I asked him, what's your secret? Uh, and uh, you know, just to let you know, this wasn't like US uh, publications, but it included international as well, like The Economist and Financial Times. And here's what he did. He had ready-made quotes waiting for the media. If there was a rumor about a possible merger between, say, Cellular 1 and Landline 2, he'd go ahead and write up the quote and send it to a handful of journalists under the email subject, comments on the rumored merger between Cellular 1 and Landline 2. Once the story broke, the journalist would simply cut and paste his quote into the article. His quotes were often contrarian, which journalists love, and they ran in stark contrast to the positive quotes found in press releases by executives involved in the merger, saying, Best deal ever! This is nothing but good for the industry! So, uh, that was quite refreshing. And that takes us to step four. Be the friendly jerk, aka the contrarian. That telecom analyst that I just mentioned got a lot of mileage out of being an industry contrarian. When the entire industry zigs, be the one who zags. Journalists often want to be fair and balanced in their reporting. That's why a well-researched article often has quotes or perspectives on two sides of an issue. What happens most of the time is that a busy journalist gets one perspective, the usual predictive perspective, and goes to print with it. Very few people want to be the industry's curmudgeon, but if you're willing to do it, journalists within your industry will reward you with lots of quotes. Since you're saying something that is counter or unpopular, they're going to want to quote you verbatim, even if it's a weak quote, which means your business will also get a mention. You're not going to be John or Jane Smith earthling. You're going to be John or Jane Smith title at company. So that context is really important and gets your name out there. You still have to fashion a reasonable argument for your perspective. So here's where those essays you wrote in freshman comp where you take the opposite viewpoint on a subject will come in handy. If everyone is saying electric cars are the future and good for the environment, you'll want to get a quote out there saying electric cars are bad for the environment. You'll have to develop a well-balanced, logical argument why. In fact, this one's easy because I've read a little bit of on this subject. Your position will be something like batteries currently being produced for electric cars require a type of mining for raw materials that's horrible for the environment while creating unsafe work conditions for the miners, many of whom are underage in third world countries. In addition, the disposal of these batteries at the end of the car's life often creates more issues than it solves. How about a hard one? Take something everyone loves or holds in esteem within your industry and criticize it. It seems like 
the PR industry, especially in fashion and entertainment, loves Instagram. How would I attack that? Remember all the cool kids in high school who always sat together and never smiled in your direction, said Mickey Kennedy, president and founder at e-releases? Well, they've all grown up and joined Instagram to become influencers, creating large followers through vain snapshots of their life, all while being paid by big brands to like, follow, and share. Okay, maybe that one wasn't so hard after all. You see, unpopular opinions are fascinating to readers, who may or may not agree with your take on things. One client asked me about the ethics of having an executive with the company not himself associated with being the company contrarian. I didn't see a problem with it. I later found out that that person didn't actually exist and was just a pseudonym. Please don't be this person. If you aren't comfortable with being the company contrarian, then see if someone else at the company is willing to be that person. If not, move on. There are other ways to get media attention. However, this one can be effective if you're creative and walk a careful line, never intending to alienate or offend your audience. Step five, count me in. Special thanks goes to Janelle James, one of my editors, who I had review my notes for this uh, video training, and she put this pic uh, in, in the notes, and I, I liked it, so I thought I'd share it with you. The media loves numbers. Consider using a number list like top 10 destinations for a romantic getaway, five ways to start saving for retirement, Rankings also work very well, like top 10 law schools for under $50,000, or five worst mid-sized cars to buy new. Anything that gives information in an orderly way, even just the use of bullets, should give you an edge over content that just meanders and includes lots of chunky paragraphs. One client, an international directory of bed and breakfasts, uh, would issue seasonal top 10 lists, like top 10 spookiest bed and breakfasts for Halloween in a particular state or region, top 10 bed and breakfasts for autumn leaf washing in New England or in the Mid-Atlantic. They always got media pickup as the content was easy for readers to consume, had good entertainment value, and was also easy for busy, busy journalists to use, often just cutting and pasting with minor tweaks. I previously mentioned that I had a client that uses surveys and polls across various industries and they receive tremendous media pickup. What makes their press releases so media friendly is the use of numbers and statistics. Here's the beginning of the headline of a recent press release they did. 42% of small businesses plan to build a mobile app in the future. They begin the press release with the observation that the average American spends five hours a day on mobile devices. Then they go on to say that 32% of small businesses currently have an app and that 42% plan to build one in the future. Those are all numbers that will resonate with the readership of small business owners, many of whom may have a nagging feeling they should start paying more attention to mobile users. The press release includes a quote from a small business owner who has built an app so that's pretty predictable, as well as an expert at a digital marketing company who says if a small business has a limited budget, it would be better served by increasing the existing uh, company's website uh, for mobile users, uh, changing the mobile responsiveness of the website, rather than making an app. And that's sort of contrarian, so you can kind of see why that's included. This press release should result in articles within business, web design, and usability blogs and publications. This client publishes directories for various industries, and each press release keeps their name in circulation and further establishes them as a credible source for data. They receive enormous traffic and links from the resulting articles, giving their directories more value for the companies that are listed there. How do you conduct a survey? It's as easy as using a service like SurveyMonkey or even Google Forms to create a link you send to a group of people. It could be a survey of your customers, your leads, or even a segment of your industry. A couple of my clients have had success asking trade associations to share the survey link with their members, promising them access to the data and sometimes even co-branding the survey with the association, which results in increased credibility when you issue your press release to the media. You have to have a large enough population of respondents for the survey to have some credibility, usually at least 100, and you need to put a lot of thought into the questions. Learning that 62 learning that 62% of teenagers like sports cars is not really interesting, but learning that 17% of teenagers would like to learn how to change their own oil is kind of interesting. Create these interesting questions that might not seem so obvious. Let's say you're an automobile insurance company uh, in a survey on teenage drivers, some questions for the young drivers that might yield interesting results for the media are, do you sometimes take a longer route to avoid a particular feature like a busy intersection or roundabout? 
Had there been times when you became distracted because you received a text or social media notif notification on your mobile device? Do you sometimes feel like you're not really as good of a driver as you should be? Put some effort into designing the survey to include a few questions that hopefully will yield fun or surprising results. A captivating and thought-provoking question will pique a reader's interest who want to know the results regardless how the data actually skews. Perhaps even think of the type of quotes you could use in reaction to the question. For that last question about being a good driver, you could put together a compelling quote that addresses driver confidence. Let's say the survey determined that a little more than two-thirds of teenage drivers feel as though they're not a good uh, driver or not as good as they should be. Quote, the results show that more than two-thirds of young drivers lack confidence behind the wheel, said Jane Smith, Vice President of Marketing at ABC Insurance. This is proven out by the higher percentage of auto accidents by this population of drivers. We draw comfort in the fact confidence improves over time as the driver accumulates more experience on the road while interacting with other drivers. Let's say the survey determined that only 12% feel as though they're um, not as good of a driver as they should be. The results show that 88% of young drivers are getting the training and support they need to feel confident behind the wheel, said Jane Smith, Vice President of Marketing at ABC Insurance. Although this population of drivers accounts for a higher percentage of accidents, that number normalizes as the driver accumulates more experience on the road while interacting with other drivers. Brian Dean of Backlinko has done exceedingly well by putting together what he calls curated reports, each being a detailed analysis of a subject or industry. He's built his own team of freelancers who work to collect and analyze data. He's earned media coverage on major news sites like TechCrunch, Entrepreneur, The Guardian, CNBC, BuzzFeed, and The Next Web, just to name a few. His main goal isn't press, but links and traffic. His efforts have resulted in a 32% boost in monthly traffic and more than 4,000 backlinks, which helps his SEO considerably. This is an extreme example of using numbers and data to get media coverage, relying on raw data instead of a survey. Just know that all of these efforts can be as simple or as complex as you're willing to allow. So if you've read my bio on my website, e-releases, you'll see that uh, I have a slight addiction to diet soda, so please excuse me here. Step six, newsjacking. Newsjacking uh, is a term that's come along in recent years. It's simply riding on the coattails of breaking news or trends. Uh, if everyone is talking about a particular topic or subject, is there a way to get your foot in the door and introduce something related to your brand that expands the discussion? For example, a couple of years ago, there was the social media viral challenge of whether a particular photo of a dress, hashtag the dress, appeared blue and black or white and gold. Dunkin' Donuts weighed in with a playful press release and social media campaign that featured special donuts in both color combinations. Newsjacking can come across as disingenuous if executed incorrectly. During the early part of the pandemic, we received lots of press releases selling expensive hand sanitizers and masks, which we refused under wise counsel from PR Newswire. People who sent these types of press releases were seen as opportunistic, and the majority did not receive media attention. That being said, newsjacking is done all the time, and it actually precedes even the word newsjacking. For example, every time there's a major hack at a national retailer, there are security and IT companies doing press releases weighing in on the matter, all while promoting their own solutions. If these press releases have compelling quotes and can pull some interesting numbers together, they might stand a chance at media coverage, but it does get hard to stand out among all the competition. Newsjacking works best if you can be original and enter a topic that your competitors haven't yet joined. Speed is one approach. Being creative is the other. Security and IT companies doing press releases about a breach at a major retailer is rather expected. What might not be expected is an ice cream company, Ben & Jerry's in this case, announcing in a press release a new flavor called Justice Remixed as the company's response to civil unrest over systemic racism. If Ben & Jerry's was any other company, such a move could be seen as pandering or simply fall flat. Fortunately for them, it aligns with their values and financial commitments to social causes. It's also a response that appears more meaningful and concrete than the hundreds of press releases from business saying they support minorities and will make a donation to a particular organization. Cash and words are among the least newsworthy responses to such an effort. That being said, a few of these companies playing it safe will get articles, but the odds 
are not great. Ben and Jerry's hit rate was much higher across lots of national media outlets as well as small local newspapers where there was a store in that local area. Whatever you do, learn from what's working now and try to put your own spin on it. Step 7. Become a local media darling. This step can be done on your own without paying for a service like e-releases. I know, <laughs> but uh, it, it's, it's a really great one and uh, if, you're, if you don't have a budget for distributing press releases, it's a great way to get started and to get some of that local media attention. If you're simply looking for coverage in your local area, there's perhaps less than 12 people who would report on you. A major newspaper, perhaps a minor paper, a business newspaper if you're lucky enough to have one in your area, uh, maybe a, a local online news site. There might be two or three TV stations and perhaps you know uh, the same two to three radio stations that actually interview local businesses or have shows on these radio stations or TV stations that sometimes uh, profile local businesses. Check your local newspaper and see who normally writes about businesses like you, your industry or your size. Contact that person. If you don't know their email address, simply call and ask. It's as easy as that. You can also try services online that could try to locate a person's email address, like hunter.io. There's several of these that offer it for free for a handful of searches. Simply email that person and write a personal request after making an observation. Like perhaps you've recently seen or heard a story they did on Company X and while you felt it was well done, <laughs> always be appreciative and, and, and uh, uh, yeah, say something nice, uh, you feel a different story on your business will be welcome to their readers or viewers because, you know, insert reason here. Uh, you're a third generation baker in the area. Uh, you recently pivoted due to a recent hardship um, to making hand sanitizer at your local distillery. Uh, you employ local citizens who are handy capable, perhaps in, uh, including a conversation uh, inviting the media to talk about that very word. Or it could be a, a company charity event that you're holding and you'd like the media to attend or cover. At TV and radio stations, you're often looking to contact the show producer or person responsible for booking guests. It's almost never the host of, of the show that you're looking at, so that's an important thing to keep in mind. Once you have your Rolodex of 12 or fewer local journalists, simply send thoughtful emails perhaps four to eight times a year to each. In addition to pitching them occasional ideas for your company, share tips and ideas they may want to consider that might not focus on your company, like an observation you may have made from trade publications or a national story. Your goal is to become a friend and asset to these local gatekeepers, making it all the more likely they will run a story in your company from time to time when you do share a meaningful milestone in your business. In fact, this local approach of building relationships with journalists is the exact blueprint PR firms use, so feel free to extend it towards industry trade publications and even national media. The downside is that at some point you will find your time is best spent running your business and you get more mileage out of simply issuing strategic press releases over a newswire through a service like e-releases. Step 8. Invest in your PR. Everyone should invest in the PR of their business. PR brings traffic and customers. It can greatly exceed the ROI of paid advertising. Paid advertising works through the raising of bids as more competitors join, increasing costs and making what is affordable today just break even tomorrow. Most customers who visit your website from a news article or doing a search based off an article, they don't price shop. They want to do business with the company mentioned in that article. Lots of clients have found that these customers tend to be the most loyal and the most profitable. PR takes minimal time. Most press releases are rather simple, stating facts in the third person. Pay attention to the headline, the quote, and the opening paragraph. Your most cost-effective use of time in PR is the building of the strategy before you even write the press release. Build several ideas for a press release and then test each, trying to measure and gauge media response. Strategy is the one thing most of my self-service customers fail to utilize when doing press releases. Their PR success suffers from it as they never get out of the zone of doing obvious milestone press releases. Let PR be a creative outlet for your business and exist as an extension of your messaging to staff, customers, leads, partners, and your industry. There are ideas in your head right now from today's video training you would not have if it weren't for you committing the time and energy to learn more about press release strategies. Now is the time for you to capitalize on those ideas and invest 
in your PR through press release marketing. How it works. Mindset. Brainstorm and inventory your business and industry. Develop ideas for a six press release campaign. Actions. Writing the press release or outline for a press release writer like uh, we offer here at e-releases. Distribute over PR and Newswire through e-releases. Outcomes. Media coverage. Traffic to your website. Improved SEO through the backlinks that are created from this. Better customers. Improved employee morale. Better understanding of your business and the unique selling proposition clarity and refinement that happens by doing the audit and inventory of your USP. Are you happy with the way things are going right now in your business? If you're not, you need a new mindset, a new plan, and a new outcome. You need to invest in press release marketing. I routinely have clients say that a successful press release has paid for itself a hundred times over. However, you need to calculate the unsuccessful press releases as well. Then evaluate the complete PR campaign, which consists of usually a minimum of six press releases. I recommend that serious students of PR plan for as many as 12 press releases, but be willing to shift and change the approaches to incorporate small wins along the way, building on what works. Recap. One, own your story. Two, research your industry. Three, quote me on it. Four, be the friendly jerk, aka the contrarian. Five, count on me. Six, newsjacking. Seven, become a local media darling. Eight, invest in your PR. Should you use one or all of these steps? You should try different approaches until you find one that works for you. Then see if you can repeat it. The company that relies on surveys and polls only focuses on that, but almost every press release they distribute through e-releases is generating actual articles. Another client who predominantly posts university rankings for different specialties like nursing, business, and law doesn't have to branch out from this approach as he is achieving consistent media pickup from a regular distribution of press releases, and it's working year after year. Until you find what works for you, keep testing the different approaches. The biggest mistake a client can make is assuming after one or two press release failures that PR just won't work for them and their business. Well, today I promised how to develop a PR strategy for your business, even if you don't have deep pockets or feel you're very newsworthy. How to attract media attention by crafting content the media wants to receive and share with its readers or viewers without using consultants, PR firms, or those high-priced publicists. How to leverage what makes you unique without deceit, hyperbole, or making your skin crawl even if you feel like you're not that special. Hint, you are. How to drive traffic and customers to your website through the same methods used by high-priced PR firms without the expensive retainers or long-term contracts. How to reverse engineer what's working and what's not being discussed within your industry for media opportunities, even if you're not an industry expert. How to stand out when your product or service is indistinguishable from a lot of stuff sold online, even if the only thing that separates you cannot be seen like amazing customer service. How to get local media coverage, even if you never write a single press release or spend a dollar with me. A step-by-step -step strategy for getting media coverage. <clears throat> what you need to win. A PR strategy based on the eight steps. These eight steps alone are enough to propel you to PR success. Boosting your traffic, improving your SEO, and getting better quality customers. Now you have a choice. You can take the information I've give you, given you today and forget all about it. Move on to something else, some other new shiny object. Or you can keep on struggling to get traffic and customers watching the profit from your advertising dwindle over time. Or, and this is what I recommend, you can get started to get the clients you know you deserve, the ideal clients you've always wanted. How I can help. Here's what I have for you. I'm offering you a download of the slides and notes from today's video training. Plus, I'm giving you a free eight-day email training series that helps you better understand the steps that's discussed today. Regardless of the type of business you're coming from, eReleases is here to serve you and to provide the broadest, most focused, and affordable press release distribution possible. I know press releases may not be in your wheelhouse, but I want to provide you with the support you need to succeed through media coverage. Go ahead and visit eReleases.com slash slides 
to sign up for the email training, plus receive a download to today's slides and notes, all at no charge to you. Or you can click the link below this uh, video. Who this is for? You must have something <clears throat> or someone to promote, whether it's a business, product, service, book, or person. And uh, you can be an expert or a celebrity. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. So a person can be promoted. We deal with speakers and authors all the time. You must be aware of what your USP, unique selling proposition, is or could be. You must be willing to do the work of auditing your industry to determine gaps or blind spot opportunities. If that's you, we're a perfect fit. Why are we doing this? We do this because we love helping small businesses achieve their goals. Plus, we know that you might need help developing your press releases and getting them distributed. We're here for you. Again, what you get. You get the slides and notes from this video training, a link to this video training, an eight-day email training series, a PDF copy of my book, The Beginner's Guide to Writing Powerful Press Releases. This Amazon bestseller will help you understand the nuts and bolts of press release writing. A press release checklist. This report features what must be included in your release, what to eliminate in your press release, first person, second person, third person, which is the appropriate one you should use, what's the best link for your press release, and much more. There's 24 points in total. This is all zero cost to you. Visit ereleases.com slash slides, S-L-I-D-E-S, to sign up, or click on the link below this video. No charge, no credit card, just free content and support. I'm making this free offer to you because once you see the value of a PR campaign and the incredible distribution you get through e-releases, I believe you will become a customer for life. Let's look at some of my customers. Bill Seagraves of Catch Fire Funding received a key media pickup in a trade publication, an article in Financial Advisor that gave him enormous credibility that he's used on his website and in marketing to potential clients. Kenny Atchison. His client, an author, received a radio interview and a request to become a monthly columnist in an industry trade publication. That's amazing. And it's very similar to the carpet company that issued uh, press releases on marketing being asked by one of the floor trade publications if they'd like an ongoing column to discuss marketing. Aaron Headley. This designer of custom wine cellars received two editorial features, and those are usually pretty extensive as a result of her PR campaign. Jason Templer, he received pickup in more than a dozen publications, as well as added 10 new clients and more than 4,000 website visitors uh, as a result of the PR campaign. Hunad Baliwala, he received media pickup on ABC, NBC, MSNBC, and Washington Post, and thousands of website visitors. Website traffic doubled as a result of the PR campaign. Linda Lepecki, this smart start coach received media coverage online, in print, and on TV. She, taught, she saw a traffic increase more than tenfold, and she writes, We're still getting customers months later with no further effort on our part. As long as articles stay up and engage readers, you can continue to benefit from that traffic and customers. Sam Jane Brown. She's an independent fiction writer. And no, no, fiction is one of the hardest subjects to get media coverage on. But she stuck with the process and she received several articles from her PR campaign. She writes, be prepared to stick to a good plan and well-written releases and do this for at least a year. As an independent author, I am now starting to reap the rewards of my release plan. I am very happy. Mike Allabach, who happens to be a boudoir photographer, a local one, is the perfect example of someone uh, who is a local business uh, who received national and international attention. Uh, Huffington Post, Cosmopolitan, Daily Mail, Yahoo Lifestyle, as well as local coverage in the Philadelphia Inquirer. By focusing on a unique selling proposition of making body positive photographs of clients of all sizes, he tapped into publications and readers wanting to learn more and to see examples of his work. In fact, we have a video of Mike and a case study on our website at ereleases.com slash case studies. Do you see how people are making PR work for them? Have you already thought of a couple of strategic ideas you could do for a press release? Go ahead and write those down before you forget them. It all starts with a little planning. 
Are you beginning to see how a PR campaign of six or more press releases might help you test PR as a means of getting traffic, improved SEO, and better customers for your business? Please take advantage of this free offer by clicking on the link below this video or by visiting ereleases.com slash slides, S-L-I-D-E-S. -E Again, what you get is amazing and it's all free. The slides and notes from this video, a link to this video training, an eight-day email training series, a PDF copy of my book on press release writing, a press release checklist. Just visit ereleases.com slash slides. Everything is free. It's a solid foundation that includes everything you need to get started building a PR campaign except for press release distribution. When you're ready, we've got you covered there as well through a special new customer promotion at ereleases. Just click on the link below this video or visit ereleases.com slash slides to sign up and get all the great resources I've mentioned today. I appreciate you taking the time to learn more about building a PR strategy through press releases. I look forward to working with you and adding you as another ereleases press release success story. Cheers.